everybody and welcome back to another video. So actually this video was prompted from my last video when I showed our office studio setup. Um, and I realized after finishing that video how ugly that setup actually was. So I'm gonna take you through the steps of some renovations that we're doing. Uh, we're starting with a floating desk and the way that I'm gonna create that is I actually got butcher block and I'm staining it, but I wanna show you that process. And then I'll also show you the transformation, what I do to fix up some things and what the end result will look like. So hopefully it ends up turning out a lot better than what we had in that last video. So as you can see here, I already did the top part of this. This is the bottom part. Now, if I were to redo this, I wouldn't put it on my freezer to do it. I would put it on a flat surface so I didn't get the leaks that came over the edge and bubbled up on the bottom. But this is the bottom of it, so I don't care about it as much. I'm gonna sand that off a little bit, but not really care about it too much because nobody's gonna look under the desk. First, I started with the wood stain. This is a dark walnut wood stain. And when using this, you want to let it cure for at least 15 minutes after putting it on. But you can leave it on as long as you want. It depends on how dark you want it to end up showing up. But this is the brand that I decided to go with. It was about $7.87 before tax. To seal it after staining it, I used Verithane Triple Thick Polyurethane Clear Matte Finish. And the reason I used this is I wanted it to have minimal glare when doing product shots or unboxing videos. You want to do this after the stain is completely dried. It, you also might want to sand it down after you're done letting it cure. That way it has a little bit more of a smooth finish. Always remember to wear gloves before doing this. When I did the top part, I didn't wear gloves and kind of stained up my hands. A couple other things that I would make sure you do is have some plastic down. Um, I spilled some of the stain on the garage floor and you can imagine that it stained it. It did what it's supposed to. So make sure you prep the area a lot better than I did. It's a probably a good idea to open the stain on top of whatever you're finishing and that way any spillage will just go onto it. I use a paintbrush and there's two ways that you can do this. This is the first way. I did the whole top way by just dipping the paintbrush and then following the grain. Go along with the grain when you're spreading this. For time's sake, I ended up just dumping a bunch of it on it. This is what I prefer to do. You might prefer to just use the paintbrush, but I found this to be the most effective and fastest way to do it, especially since technically you're only supposed to let this cure for 15 minutes. If you want a nice even coat, the faster you put it on, the better. That way you're getting, you know, minimal variance in the darkness of the color. And this stain comes in a bunch of different varieties of color. This is the best looking one in my opinion. So I wanted to go with this. Now you can find butcher block that's already stained to the color that you want, but it usually costs a hundred to $200 more. Now you see, I'm still spreading out with the grain as evenly as I can. Make sure you mind the edges as far as you're going. This is one thing I just noticed watching this video, but also, you know, Make sure you don't leave a ring around it if you're setting it on it like I am. It's probably not the best idea to set the stain on there, especially after it's leaked over. Be careful on the edges, like I said, so you don't get run off. I had to be very careful since the front part had already been done of the desk uh, to clean up any of the runoff that went over the edge so it didn't bubble up and stick. As you watch my videos for do it yourself, I think that, you know, I get to mess up so you don't have to. But if you have this on a completely flat surface with plastic under it, you're not gonna run into the running that typically happens when you're putting the stain on. The list of parts that you'll need in this do-it-yourself is the butcher block, which I got for $219 at Home Depot. They actually knocked some of the price off, so it's $170. I got the wood stain for $7.87, the polyurethane triple thick for $7.87. And then I got two ever-built 20 inch by 16 inch heavy duty shelf brackets and these can hold up to 250 pounds. Also now at that it's cured you want to take a rag and rub off all the excess. So this was after 15 minutes of waiting. Now you're ready to seal the top after a few hours of it drying. I think I did this the next day. Um, but you're gonna put the polyurethane on. This has the thickness of like Elmer's glue 
and so it's a lot harder to spread than I thought it would be. Here's the paintbrush that I used to do it. This was a very timely process. I think this took a lot longer than staining it just because I wanted to make sure it was nice and even on the coats. Follow the same method as before though, going with the grain. It's always a good idea to go with the grain on one of these projects. You're always gonna get the best result painting or sealing with the grain. In this process, mine actually ended up coming out a little bit gritty, but I did want to keep it that way. I didn't sand it after. Now, when mounting the brackets, you want to use big bolts. I think I used three and a half inches or four and a half inches into the ball and then made sure it was level. I measured 16 inches from the ground because that's how high I wanted it to be. Here's the before and after. We had this ugly kitchen table that was in there before. We didn't have a lot of lightroom because of where the legs on the table went. And now we've got this beautiful, clean look. We also painted the room Broadway color. It's a, a very nice looking color, very dark. It turned out really great. Hopefully this uh, do-it-yourself tutorial was helpful in any way, shape, or form. Hopefully it taught you what not to do in certain scenarios and hopefully showed you something that you can tackle at your own home project. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video and we'll see you in the next one.